everybody video here for you today first of all i just want to say thanks for all the interest in my last video i think that was my most watched video in the first 24 hours i've ever uploaded and thanks for all the great comments i know a lot of you appreciate sites that you have never seen before never heard of and will never visit places that are off the tourist treks these days but these are very important when putting together the total picture of human history and this is another site i'm gonna just put this video together quickly here at the end i'm gonna share a shareable video about a month or two ago i uploaded a video on all the mysterious earthworks in the amazon here and i was going to include this information in that video but that one got a little bit too long so i'm just going to upload a video about it today real quickly here i don't have a lot of free time today but this is a very important story on telling the human history of the americas this is bolivia right down here this is the barba azul nature reserve in Bolivia and the feature here are called forest islands and I believe there's one right down here this is one of the areas that the lecture talks about but these places you would never know that human history here goes back 10,800 years here's one story I have bookmarked earliest inhabitants of Amazon created thousands of artificial forest islands the University of Bern led study shows that starting around 10,850 years ago Inhabitants of the Llano de Moxos region in northern Bolivia began to create a landscape that ultimately comprised 4,700 artificial forest islands within a treeless, seasonally flooded savanna. And here is one of these forest islands. It says the Llano de Moxos is a savanna of approximately 126,132 square kilometers or 48,700 square miles located in the Beni Department of Bolivia in southwestern Amazonia. The Llano de Moxo, savanna area floods from December to March and is extremely dry from July to October, but the mounds remain above the water level during the rainy season, allowing the trees to grow on them. The mounds promoted landscape diversity and showed that small scale communities began to shape the Amazon 8,000 years earlier than previously thought. I just thought this is a very interesting story. Graham Hancock covers the early history of the Amazon in America before. It says, our research confirms this part of the Amazon is one of the earliest centers of plant domestication in the world. Researchers looked at the forest islands located within a vast savanna for signs of early gardening. We basically map large sections of forest islands using remote sensing. We hypothesize that the regularly shaped forest islands had anthropic origin. Now I will leave a couple story links and also the link to the video I'm gonna share. It says archeologists, geographers, and biologists have argued for many years that Southwestern Amazonia was probably the center of early plant domestication. It says, however, until this recent study, scientists had neither searched for nor excavated old archeological sites in this region that might document pre-Columbian domestication of these globally important crops. It says, this evidence we have found shows that the earliest inhabitants of the area were not just tropical hunter-gatherers, but colonizers who cultivated plants. This opens the door to suggest that they already ate a mixed diet when they had arrived in the region. But this history goes back almost 11,000 years. So we are totally reshaping our views on early American history, North and South. Here's a story from Mongo Bay. I will leave this link below also. It says Amazonia's people domesticated crops on forest islands 10,000 years ago. Graham Hancock wrote in his America before that it seems they were developing a special soil down here to grow crops in. I always thought that was very interesting. People were doing things here a long time ago. I'm just starting to give them credit for it now. It says scientists have found four far-flung locations around the world where they say crops were first domesticated around 11,000 years ago. This research helps us to prove Southwest Amazonia is likely the fifth. The 4,700 artificial forest islands believed to be built gradually by humans speckled the seasonally flooded savanna in northern Bolivia. This island of Menachi, the forest island in the Barba Azul Nature Reserve, Bolivia, were the oldest evidence for cassava and squash was found and they found people started growing squash and other things down here about 10,200 years ago that's what their research shows 
says scientists search within the soil cores for the telltale signs of aging crops in the forms of tiny grass, microfossils. The team collected radiocarbon dated sedimentary cores from all the sites and conducted archaeological excavations of four. The scientists search within the soil cores for telltale signs of ancient crops in the form of tiny glass microfossils. Plants as they grow produce glass-like silica particles called phytoliths inside their cells. The various shapes of the phytoliths are unique to the particular plant types and can remain in the soil for thousands of years. Squash phytoliths were discovered in the soil cores as far back as 10,250 years before present. Cassava, 10,350 years before present. And corn, maize, 6,850 years before present. But about that soil, it says here, in a more recent study, new evidence was found of innovation by ancient farmers in the headwaters of the Jingyu River Basin in southern Amazonia, dating back to the pre-Columbian period. Farmers there enrich tropical soils using charcoal and compost, creating fertile planting zones called dark earth areas that increased overall species richness. And here is a look at one excavated area in these planting zones. One pretty far down here, it says areas of fertile dark earth found deep in the soil in the Jingyu River Basin in southern Amazonia. The tests that these people were modifying their soils to improve their crops. Now, I will leave the link for my geoglyphs video also below, but they think these come from a much later period in time, maybe about 3,000 years ago, but a lot of these were built adjacent or near those forest islands, and in some areas, human history stretches for thousands of years down here. But this is a fascinating site, putting together the total picture of what went on in the early Americas, maybe even a little hint to, to the migration of the Americas. We were taught that people came from the north and went south, but then there is also Graham Hancock writing about DNA studies that says people from this part of the world, their DNA came from overseas and from the Pacific. So what is the real story? I think we are just beginning to get a grasp of it. My free time for YouTube has ended for the day, so I'm going to end it with this video from the European Association of Archaeologists. This came out a couple days ago, only been viewed 15 times. So go over to their channel and at least give them a view, maybe a comment. But this is important information. This is a history that isn't well known. I go over some interesting archaeological work in southwestern Amazonia and Bolivia in these areas I've been showing. This is just more kind of lost history, unknown history, history that goes back way back in time. Hope you thought this was cool, and here is that video. Hope you enjoy it, and you all have a very nice time. Well, uh, hi everyone. My name is Javier with Peret, and I am a PhD student in Amazonian archaeobotany at the Casas Research Group in the University Pompeu Fabra here in Barcelona. Uh, and I'm going to briefly present the project we are carrying out in the Llanos de Mojo, southwestern Amazonia. The increasing discovery of numerous pre-Columbian settlements in the Amazonia has led archaeologists of the lowland neotropics to question how ancient societies adopted to, the, to this biome and what was the impact on the landscapes resulting from their activities. Archaeological evidence for complex agricultural societies has been found in many areas of the Amazon basin. The large amount of heterogeneity of the archaeological remains, such as earthworks in southwestern Amazonia or the famous anthropogenic dark earths along the coasts of major Brazilian rivers, constitute a testimony of the cultural diversity that characterized the Amazonia and the level of, tran of landscape transformations carried out by generations of people. Indeed, for some researchers, this is the reason why Amazonia should be considered as a domesticated landscape. The Llanos de Mojos, where we are investigating, is located in the lowlands of Bolivia. It's a huge fruit savanna of circa 150,000 square kilometers, where patches of riverine laderic forest appear interspersed. 
the Llanos has an impressive archaeological landscape characterized by the great variety of earthworks, such as monumental mounds, raised fields, canals, causeways, all of them made by pre-Columbian late Holocene agrarian societies that greatly modified their landscapes. For example, recently it has been calculated that in the Llanos there are about 550 square kilometers of raised fields, and now we know that they were used to cultivate maize and manioc. However, the presence of pre-Columbian populations in this territory leads back to early Holocene times. Another type of earthworks is widely scattered across the Llanos. Those raised patches of forest that you can see in this picture, which are usually circular, are called forest islands. There are hundreds in the Llanos, and the excavation of one of them revealed that it is a prehistoric artificial mound made by, made by early to mid Holocene hunter-gatherers, and then it was reoccupied by agriculturalist populations of late Holocene. This excavation was carried out at Isla del Tesoro. It showed a first occupation which spans from about 10,500 years to 4,000 years before present. The people who inhabited this area at this time were hunter-gatherers that made a shared medium obviously by the consumption of snails, although they also, for example, hunted mammals or catch fish. Then the site was abandoned and it was reoccupied approximately until the arrival of the Europeans to South America by a group of rooks that apparently were no longer involved in hunting and gathering activities and that otherwise were producing ceramic pottery, reason why we interpret them as agricultural rooks. Well, this finding stimulated new questions about forest islands. How many of them are of actual anthrop anthropic origin? What is their general chronology? Which were the societies that built them? And how they, did they subsist? This is why we decided to visit another area of the Llanos, where forest islands are also present, to do a survey and an archaeological excavation. We choose the Barbazul Nature Reserve, where we, within 100 hectares, there are 24 forest islands and hundreds of pre-Columbian raised fields, sometimes found in association with some of the islands. We visited 19 of these 24 forest islands, and all of them have high concentrations of organic-rich sediments, wood charcoals, burnt earths, and pottery. So all of them are anthropogenic. Then we excavated one of those islands, locally known as Isla Maneci. It's a huge settlement located next to a Palo channel and has raised fields in its surrounding. There, we also identified two main phases. The oldest one is from early Holocene, at around 10,000 years before present, and it's a layer of extremely compact burnt earths with large presence of charcoals although the occupation was of really short duration. Unfortunately, we did not find any other evidence to help us understand what kind of occupation it was. Then there is a hiatus of about 5,000 years after the first phase, and the site was reoccupied during 2,000 years between circa 5,000 years and 3,000 years before present. This layer corresponds to an occupation of people who produced pottery and cultivated squash and maize, as shown by the phytolith analysis I carried out from sediments. It's interesting because unlike Isla del Tesoro, Isla Manechi is not a shell medium, and on the other hand, the ceramic phase is much longer, with the early Holocene phase, while the, the early Holocene phase is much shorter. Moreover, while Isla Manechi is surrounded by raised fields, Isla del Tesoro doesn't. As we have seen, forest islands were home of hunter-gatherer and agriculturalist populations in the Bolivian Amazon during the Holocene. Our results show that these settlements were made by different groups that exploited different resources at different places and chronologies. So forest islands are long-term archives of human occupations key to better comprehend the degree of land use that southwestern Amazonia has supported during 
several thousands of years as a result of the economic and cultural activities carried out by the pre-Columbian Indians. What they present is the result of preliminary investigations, but further research on forest islands is required to fully reconstruct land use practices in this particular region of Amazonia. We need to confirm, for example, how many forest islands are anthropogenic if some of them are natural. And given the dissimilarity of the two islands investigated that I show you, we also need to delve into what kind of subsistence strategies were practiced by the inhabitants of the islands or which of these sites were built and or occupied at the same or different times. Thank you very much for your attention.